Sand. Sabotage. Wrecking. Deliberate. What's at the back of it? Who did it? I know how the law stands. You broke a contract, therefore you broke the law. But it's everywhere. Look at the street. I paid my money to look at the pictures. The Aztec song and twilight. If I want to sit in the dark, I can do it at home. Yes, free of charge. Yes. I think it's a blinking shame robbing the poor people like that. We've got to have our money back. It's an act of providence, like an earthquake or a thunderbolt. Or a baby. Will you kindly not interfere? We've got to have our money back. I'm so sorry I'm late, Mrs. Verloc, but I had a hell of a time trying to eat my egg on toast in the dark. Half of it's in my ear now. They want their money back, but we can't afford it. I do wish Mr. Verloc would come. <laughs> Place the hour. Can't even see the picture. They're getting nasty. Nasty? <laughs> Leave them to me. Hey, you. What's all this about? Lend me a flashlight, Jay. Is it our fault if the light fails? Supposing you were a policeman and got hit over the nut, you think the government had asked for their money back? I paid for my seat. Yes, and what about the one you put your feet on? you get home? I haven't been out. You weren't in 20 minutes ago. I came and called up the stairs. I was asleep. Why are you shining the torch on me? Can't you switch on the light or something? We can't. It's failed. What? The fuse gone then? No, it's everywhere. In the streets and the trams. And the audience downstairs wants their money back. They're making a terrible row about it. Well, I'll give it back. We, we can't possibly afford it. Oh, yes, we can. We must be crazy. It'll clear us right out. You're always saying we don't cover expenses. That's all right. 
Doesn't pay to antagonize the public. I've got some money coming in. Go on. Well, it's for you to say. But if we're going to be generous, let's do it properly. Come on downstairs and make a speech about it. No, no. They're used to you. You do it. All right. I still think you're crazy. It's an act of God, I tell you. And what do you call an act of God? I call your face one, and you won't get your money back on that. <laughs> now, if a plane were to come along and drop a bomb on you, that would be an unfriendly act within the meaning of the act. But if the juice dries up of its own accord, that's an act of providence, as laid down in the act of William the Fourth, where an act is defined as any activity actuated by actual action. No wonder the blinking lights went out. <laughs> it's a moot point. Ah, moot point, um. Make them pay. That's right, Ma. Yes. We want our money back. And how are you going to get it? Apply sanctions? Are you familiar with the details of the covenant? If you'd studied Article 257, Paragraph 24, Line 6, Sanction B, it says definitely no. Oh. Yes, you didn't know that, did you? You're all ignorant. Now, if you take my advice, you go off home, because there's nothing doing here. Now, go on, get off. What do you think you're doing? Just lending a hand. I thought I told you not to interfere. I've been delivering a little counterattack. Look, they're on the run. Well, then come right back. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you're going to get your money back. Don't give in now. I'll stand by you. I'd prefer you to go and stand by your apple store. Ladies and gentlemen, I've been speaking to Mr. Verloc. And since you're all regular patrons and good friends, he's going to let you have your money back. There'll be no money back, I tell you. Go on, get off. Please, don't pay any attention to him. I tell you, you're crazy. I had it all fixed. Will you mind your own business? Of all the obstinate people that If you I... don't go away, I'll call the police. Rene, start refunding the patrons their money. Come over here, Pat. Come over here, Pat. None of that. You haven't been here before, off it. Thank you for your trouble. I'm sure you meant well. Not at all. I like trouble. Up. Please tell Mrs. Verloc, miss. Oh, there you are, ma'am. I've got to hurry home now, because my husband's having trouble with his kidneys again, and I can't leave him for long. Your young brother's looking after him. What, the kidneys? No, the vegetables. Have you done all this by yourself? Oh, come on, don't be so modest. Well, we didn't have to pay them back their money after all. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. Always that woman, Mrs. Jones, manages to make the cabbage brown. I'm always telling you, you like things green. I'll make you a salad. Stevie, run next door and get a nice big head of lettuce. Long or old? I like long best. Whichever's freshest. Tell them to charge it. We very nearly wouldn't have been able to afford lettuce if we paid them back. You didn't seem very interested when I told you. I mean, why were you so keen to pay them back at all? No, it's not that. 
only anything for quiet. I don't like attention being thrown to us like that. Good evening, Mr. Furlock. Forgive me for butting in on your private affairs, but this bright specimen didn't appear to know whether you wanted long, round, square, or oblong lettuce. So I brought a selection. I distinctly said long ones. You know I did. Did you? I thought you said long ones. I said long ones. Ah, oh, good evening, Mr. Furlock. So you came home just in time to see the trouble, eh? Me? I've been in all the afternoon. But I could have sworn I saw you come in just about... Well, you were wrong. I didn't know anything about it until you woke me, did I? No. He was lying down upstairs. I had to call him. Sorry. My mistake, I suppose. Well, here we are. I thought someone was committing a murder. Someone probably is. On the screen there. Stevie, hop on a chair and fix that fan light. Look out, George Arliss doesn't bite you, Steve. Well, good night, all. around the market tomorrow. Thank you. Do you mind if I come off early tonight, Gov? Yeah? Okay, Ted. Thank you. Good night, boys. That fellow seems to get off whenever he likes. Sergeant, you saw what happened tonight? Yes, sir. Anything your end? I'm not certain, but I could have sworn I saw Verloc come back in the middle of it all. Later, when I challenged him, he said he'd never been out at all. His wife confirmed it. Naturally. She would if she's in it. You better find some way of talking to her. Now, listen, Spencer. The home office has been on, and they're scared something worse than tonight's job may happen. What's the idea, sir? What's the point of all this wrecking? Making trouble at home to take our minds off what's going on abroad. Same as in a crowd. One man treads on your toe, and while you're arguing with him, his pal picks your pocket. Who's behind it? Ah, oh, they're the people that you and I'll never catch. It's the men they employ that we're after. Don't you know that's very dangerous? What? Leaving stuff like that lying about. Supposing you or me were to break our leg on that. You'd be very pleased with yourself, I suppose. That would depend whether it was your leg or mine. Can't tempt you, I suppose. Oranges. Very nice today. Good for the feet. Hello, Gov. Go the pictures. As a matter of fact, I'm off to a trade show. Well, pick us a good one, then. You know, plenty of murders. <laughs> this love stuff makes me sick. Mm. The women like it, though. He's just going. Oh, then tell him not to come back too late, because we're going out. I'll be back as soon as I can. Penny each pineapples, pineapples, penny each. Penny each pineapples, pineapples, penny each. Penny each pineapples, pineapples, penny each. You'd have a cup if you had to live on ants, eh? Yeah, 
funny looking things? Yes, they're funny looking things. It'll take three like that to make soup for Lord Mayor's banquet next Saturday. Think of that. They say it's digestive with them. <laughs> There's a thing with a moustache. I hope you're satisfied with last night's show. It wasn't as easy as it looked. I had spent money too. No doubt. A neat job though. The sort of thing to make people sit up. I think you'll agree I've earned my money. I hope you didn't mind my asking for it in pound notes. You made London laugh. When one sets out to put the fear of death into people, it's not helpful to make them laugh. They're not comedians. It's not my fault if they're such fools. Londoners are not fools. They laugh because they realize what happened last night was laughable. They did right to laugh this time. What do you mean? Mr. Verloc, you will be paid your money when you've earned it. I don't follow. My dear Verloc, I once read a sign in Piccadilly Circus calling it the center of the world. I think we'd better pay a visit there in a couple of days' time. We have a small parcel in the cloakroom of the underground station. What sort of a parcel? Oh, I don't know. Let's say a parcel of fireworks. I couldn't do it. I'm not going to be connected with anything that means loss of life. You'll have to get somebody else. I won't touch it. Very well then, Mr. Verloc. If you think you're so well off that... You know I'm not. You know my position. All right then. You'll be paid your money when... In any case, if you're so fussy about doing it yourself, surely you have some kind friends who would help you? Now, don't be so silly. Go and see this man. He's a very nice old gentleman, and he makes lovely fireworks. I'll try and see him. And don't forget the date. Saturday next, Lord Mayor's show day, lots of people. You want me to come and report? Thanks, no. If your report itself is loud enough, it won't be necessary. Which is the way out, please? Thank you. This bivalve's weight of fertility is extremely high. After laying a million eggs, the female oyster changes her sex. Hmm. I don't blame her. Feet are cold. Isn't it fat? You'd be fat too if you were fed corn and bits of bread all day long. Why, if it isn't Stevie and Mrs. Verloc? Oh, it's Ted. Look, Ted. Yes, it always is. Fat, isn't it? Ought to eat more fruit, eh? You and your fruit. That's our lunch today. Why, is that all? How about a nice juicy steak with me? What about it? I'm all for it. Stevie. Good. Where should we go? I'd like to go to Simpsons. Boy, I know his uncle took him there once. Don't be silly, Stevie. We're going to the corner house for a tea shop. Oh, don't be too hard, Mrs. B. Let's make it Simpsons. <laughs> Come on. Have you ever been here before? No, never. Look what you 
you doing? You're pulling the table. I saw a picture once where a chap snatched a tablecloth off the table and left everything standing on it. You want to try that at home one day? He did. All this is very expensive, isn't it? Yes, it looks like it, doesn't it? I've got a pound note if you want it. It's all right. Now, Steve, setting aside the steak for a moment, we have here before us oysters, caviar, smoked salmon, fried, grilled, or boiled sole. I have a... Roast saddle of mutton, Kentish chicken pudding, boiled silver side, roast sirloin, chopped steaks, grilled kidneys, or roast duck. I think Stevie would like a nice poached egg on toast. Now I'll have a mixed salad. Here, drink this. Poached egg here at Simpson's. Why, that's enough to make the roast beef turn in its gravy. Oh. Three bullocks roasted whole and a cup of coffee. <laughs> When did you come over from America? About a year ago. Business wasn't too good over there. That's funny. People used to go to the States because business wasn't too good over here. How things working out now? Not too good, hmm? Not terribly. I thought I hadn't noticed you turning people away. It's hard to make a one-man business pay these days, unless you're on a sideline. Has Mr. Burlock a sideline? No, but we're quite satisfied with things as they are. Just one happy little family. Just one happy little family. Mr. Verloc's very kind to Stevie. And that means a lot to Stevie's sister. It means everything. Now, here we are. Good morning, sir. No fat for you, as usual. You see, I don't forget. I haven't seen you for a long time. Do I look as though I don't like fat? What's the big idea? What idea? First, pretending never to have been here before. Second, affording to come here on your salary. That's what everyone would like to know. There's a mystery about me. And come to think of it, there's a mystery about most people. Haven't you got some terrible secret? Never mind about that. What goes on after hours in that cinema of yours? Deeds of darkness. Does your husband go on mysterious journeys? He does, wearing false whiskers. Aha, that means there's another woman in his life. <laughs> What's the joke? <laughs> if you only knew him. He's the quietest, most harmless, home-loving person. What luck with Mrs. Burlock? She knows nothing, sir. Nothing at all. What makes you think so? She has a straight answer to everything besides her manner. Pretty woman? What's that got to do with it, sir? Oh, I know. I'm too tender-hearted myself, especially where women are concerned. What about Verlock? I'm not certain, but if he is mixed up in this, he's not giving himself away. I'm not so sure about that. Your assistant, uh, what's Hollingshead. His name? Hollingshead was signaled by you this morning to follow this man. Yes, sir. Well, uh, just reach me that paper, will you? This is his report. Telephone from a call box ten minutes ago. Verloc went to the zoo aquarium, evidently by appointment, and met a certain foreign individual who handed him a paper. He then proceeded to 065 Liverpool Road, Islington, which is a bird shop. I'm waiting for him to come out and will report again later on. Islington? Exactly. Doesn't mean much to me either. But I can't understand, madam. One of my best songbirds. It sang all day before you purchased it. Perhaps in a few days it will settle down. Nothing won't make it settle down. I've tried always. Whistling to it, clapping my hands, frying bacon, no use. It just sits there and makes me look silly. Not the bird's fault, I assure you, madam. Isn't it? I'll have my two and nine, please. And there's your bird back. I want a canary for company. Perhaps I can make him sing. <whistles> Now. You sure it was him? Listen again. <whistles> See his teeth open? Of course you did. There's a good boy. Now, don't forget, plenty of watercress and you must whistle to him. Me whistle? Perhaps you'd like me to sit in the cage and him do the housework. Uh, 
Yes, of course. You want something from my other department, don't you? <laughs> this way. My daughter. Much better than having strangers doing for you. Strangers too inquisitive, you know. <laughs> now, where are my keys? How very careless. She oughtn't to let the child play up here. Very dangerous. There you are, no father, no discipline. What can you expect? Is the little girl's father there? I don't know. He might be. <laughs> I don't know. Nobody knows. My daughter would like to know, too. But there you are. It's her cross, and she must bear it. We all have our cross to bear. <laughs> Everything there looks pretty harmless. You are right, my friend. But if I were to mix, say, a little tomato sauce with some strawberry jam, then... <laughs> I gather from our mutual friend that Saturday is the day and the hour 1.45. But how do I start the mechanism? Oh, you leave that to me. By the time you receive it, everything will have been set in motion. Uh -huh. You seem a little nervous. Mm. Don't be afraid. Say to yourself, there is one man who envies you. Envies me? <laughs> I've been a fighter always until now. But alas, I'm no longer wanted in the front line. I must keep the fighters supplied. But I would rather be in your shoes. Mm. My dear, uh, just look here. Yes, yes, perhaps you're right. I must have put it there myself. <laughs> there, there, no harm done. Well, I think everything is quite clear. Slap me hard. Granddad's been very naughty. <laughs> Look there. What's he doing? He might be watching me. Why not? They probably know too much already. They'll raid you one day. I shall give them a nice warm welcome if they do. He didn't see me. On Saturday without fail, sir, a two canaries in a nice cage with a very deep tray. Don't forget, Saturday at 1.45. Good day, sir. Good day. That child again. And now, sir. I want a nice singing canary. A canary, you say, and my dear little birds at once answered themselves. Of course I realized he wasn't really a greengrocer's assistant at all. I mean, a greengrocer's assistant can hardly afford to lunch at Simpson's, can he? He's really quite well off, and he's there to learn the business. It's one of a big chain, that shop. If you ask me, I believe he's the son of the man who owns them. How would you like a job selling fruit, Stevie? I wouldn't mind with Ted. He makes it all sound fun. Wouldn't it be grand to have steak whenever you like? Crumbs, I'd have it three times a day. You'd soon get sick of it. Yes, I wouldn't. I don't see how you cook it. So good things to eat. Except poached eggs. What's the matter with poached eggs? I think they're the worst things in the world. I bet Ted doesn't eat them. I'm sure he does. I bet he doesn't. They're beneath his dignity. I don't think Ted's so terribly dignified. Well, he's too dignified to eat eggs. Hey, I see a bunch of them. Oh, now, it's all right, Stevie. Do you think Ted will come with us and sail it? He might if you ask him. He's more likely to if you ask him. Sailing boats is fun. I like it. But Ted knows about all sorts of things. Gangsters and burglars and everything. How does he know? He reads about them. He says gangsters are not nearly so frightening as you'd think. Some of them are quite ordinary looking. Like you and me and Mr. Verloc. Perhaps he's right. After all, if gangsters looked like gangsters, the police would soon get after them, wouldn't they, I mean? Mr. Verloc in? Was he expecting you? Yes. Do you know your way through? 
Yes, I think so. Pass one, Jack. Thank you. I have an appointment with Mr. Verloc. Do you know your way through? No. You go right through the theater. Pass one, Jack. Thank you. Lady there, Ted. Hand of those apples, please. I have to slip away in a minute. Maybe I won't be bothering you anymore again after tonight. Have a word with Mr. Verloc? Well, he doesn't talk through loudspeakers. Is that what's in there? Oh, it's only the screen, not much to look at. Where does that lead to? To our front door. You remember, when it fell open. I'll give old Mr. V a surprise. Mr. Donald, come out of that. I'm your nephew. How are you? Oh, don't fiddle about. That's no good. Leave it to me. I'll get it out of him. Ah! <laughs> don't you do that to me. And don't you talk like that to me. Remember, I'm your uncle. Hold that. Not at all. I'm only too glad to pay what the job's worth. Well, I don't see anything against it. I'll call in tomorrow about 11 o'clock. And afterward... I'll settle with you when you've done the job. Of course, <laughs> if the Arsenal lose to Birmingham on Saturday, I shan't be so pleased. Arsenal? I don't follow. Uh, no, no, I know you don't follow Arsenal, but they're a good bet, believe me. Don't forget, I filled in about 10 coupons. Stands me in at about 15 bob. So I'd better... There's a lot of things to what? I know him. But what are you doing up there? Who is he? Well, he's from the filter next door. I know him all right, but... What's happened? I was showing Ted the back of the screen with the loudspeakers. Wasn't that all right? I hope I didn't hurt you. You never know, you know. Well, Mr. Verloc, no harm done, I hope. I must be getting back to shade of the old apple tree. Sorry. <laughs> Good night, all. Good night. That is Detective Sergeant Spencer of Scotland Yard. But who is he after? They're having us on. But what are we going to do about it? But he's connected with the fruit store next door, I tell you. Spencer got me my last stretch, the one I'm unlicensed from now. What are we going to do about it? One thing, this job is off, out, finished. We go quick from here and scatter. And keep scattered. And if he comes here again, tell him we don't know where we live. Say we've gone abroad. Anything you like. Yesterday, at Simpsons, when you had lunch with that fellow. With Ted, you mean? 
Remember what he said to you. Did you ask her any questions about yourself? About me? None that I can think of. Why? Because he's a detective from Scotland Yard. That's why. Spying on us. On me. Through you. But why should he? What is there to find out? I'm all right. It must be one of those fellows who came here tonight. But you said he was spying on you. No, not on me. This place, I meant. But if he has anything against anybody, why didn't he come straight to you? You'd help him. I'll talk to Mr. Detective Ted. No, no, no. I'll speak to him myself. You've been clean all day. Hello, Governor. Where's Ted? He's gone. Has he gone to Scotland Yard? Sorry, Mr. Verloc. Of course, I didn't like the idea, but I couldn't refuse. See, it was official. But why? What's wrong? Did they say what it was about? Not so far as I know. You must have been showing some funny sort of films, I dare say. You know, perhaps a bit to what? I was trying to get hold of him since first thing this morning. Wasn't there anybody there to answer? No. Well, it's too late to stop him now. He's gone out with an order. All right. All right. An old man just left this. I thought he must have made a mistake. No, no, the, that's all right. It's only a pair of birds for Stevie. I was just phoning about it. You're terribly good to him. Not to you. You're good to him, you're good to me, you know that. Yes, I know. What made you think of it? Oh, someone made the suggestion. Uh, go and call him, will you? doing up there? There's a surprise for you inside. What is it? Go and see. There was no one on the door. Forgive me for busting in like this. We're getting used to it. I'm afraid we've nothing showing at this early hour. I'm sorry, Mrs. Verloc, but I'm here on business. Same business as last night. Mrs. Verloc, there's nothing personal in all this. Isn't there? You had us fooled, all right. Trying to make Stevie and me think you were a friend. Do you think I enjoyed it? Then why did... Listen, I asked to be taken off this job this morning. You can guess why. But it's not as easy as that. In my job, you have to do as you're told. Well, what have you been told? It was about the men who came here last night. My husband had nothing to do with it. You better realize that. They came here on business about the cinema. That's just it. You've no idea what that business was. Whatever it was, I'm sure my husband hasn't done anything wrong. I hope you're right. Why do you say it like that? Because we believe there's something going on here connected with sabotage. Sabotage? That blackout the other night, you remember? Well, my husband hasn't anything to do with sabotage. 
He told me that night he'd been in all the evening. That wasn't true. I saw him come back with my own eyes. I don't believe it. You're making things very difficult for me. I'm afraid I've got to ask you a lot of questions. How about those men? I've told you before, he's the most harmless person in the whole world. He wouldn't do anything to... Stevie! They're beauties. Which one's the hen? You'll have to wait till one of them lays an egg. <laughs> Wouldn't it fool everybody if one day the gent laid an egg? Because you'd not be funny. You're right. Uh, by the way, has that two-reeler gone over to the Canterbury yet? Well, there's plenty of time. Mm, I was just wondering. Maybe you could take it along now. Because there's another little job I want doing at the same time. You know, kill two birds with one stone. Not my birds. <laughs> no, no, they'll be here when you come back. No, it's uh, that uh, projector gadget one's seeing too. Harris out at Watford says he'll do it cheaper than they will in town. But he can't come right over here and fetch it. Uh, so what they do is this. You leave it in the cloakroom at Piccadilly Circus. And Harris picks it up at half past one. But can he get it without the ticket? Oh, that's all right. Uh, you leave the ticket with the man. Harris knows him. We've done this before. <whistles> You'll better get along now. Well, there's no hurry. You'll have to walk all the way. Walk? What for? You know, you can't take film tints in public vehicles. <laughs> oh, yes, I forgot. You needn't tell your sister that you are going as far as Piccadilly. <laughs> you know what she is. <laughs> Always thinking you are going to get run over. <laughs> oh, she needn't worry. Heads I wash, tails I don't. Tails it is. For God's sake, why don't you go? I mean, uh, hurry up. You might be late. Don't forget it's got to be there by 1.30 at the latest. Hello, Steve. What do you got there? I'm taking a two-reeler over to the Canterbury. Hmm, Bartholomew the Strangler. That sounds a juicy one. Have you seen it? Fourteen times. Must be quite a wrench parting from it. Well, so long, Bartholomew. So long. Careful of the crossing. I can look after myself, can't I? Oh, Steve. Is Mr. Verlop in? Yes, I just left him. I'm afraid I've had to impose on you, Mr. Verlock. I couldn't afford to let you in on this. Now I can put my cards on the table. I've come here to ask for your help. Nothing more. I see. About those men who were here the other night, uh, when I dropped in myself, I've been instructed to get a little information about them. We'd be very grateful if you'd help us. Well, any help I can give him, of course. If 
About yourself, Mr. Verloc, uh, when did you first come to this country? Can I get you a drink or something? Not now, thanks. Well, I've got to think now. Let's see. Perhaps it would be better if you put it down on paper. Just a formality. Could you find a pen and ink? We can start right away, you know. I, Carl Anton Verloc. Gentlemen, I want to ask you a question. What is it causes teeth to fall out? Why, it comes on the jaw. <laughs> <laughs> the process of decay, inevitable in all human organisms. But decay can be arrested, instantaneously arrested. And by what? Copper. Yes, exactly. But if I may say so, by rather more than one copper, by a few coppers. I have here in my hand a tube of that remarkable preparation, salvodon, derived from two Greek words, salvo no more, and don tufe. Sixpence the small tube, and a shilling for the large tube containing four times as much. Now, let me give you just a little demonstration. Now, if somebody... Ah, oh, I see here the young gentleman who I'm sure will be happy to assist me. No, I wouldn't. Oh, yes, yes, you would. Come on, bang him up. Oh, 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 in the chair, sir, if you don't mind. But uh, I... Allow me to relieve you of the toffee, eh? It isn't toffee, that's oh, All right, all right, all right. Stay where you are. Don't get excited. Now, then, here we are. The first thing to do is to take the tube in the left hand and remove the cap. Like so. Then we pick up the toothbrush and we squeeze some of the salvadon along the bristles, like so. Then uh, I want you to observe, ladies and gentlemen, that the young gentleman's teeth are very dirty. They're no, no, not. Yes, they are. Now, come on, open your mouth. That's a good boy. Now, we now proceed to use the brush. Now, with the ordinary commercial dentifrices, what happens? It is either too gritty and takes all the enamel off, or it ain't, and it don't take nothing off. <laughs> but with salvo done, that's the happy medium. Neither too strong, nor too weak. It performs the functions that nature forgot. It cleanses the teeth, refreshes the mouth, and removes all traces of halitosis. Ali, what? Bad breath to you, sir. Yes. Same to you. Thank you, I don't need it. Come on, you are now. Relax, honey. Don't be afraid. There you are. Better now. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you will observe that I have unfortunately disarranged the young gentleman's hair. But that is easily attended to. Now, I have here a bottle of Lostwell, a shilling for that size, but I have large size, four times the size, which is only 18 feet. I will now give you a demonstration of how it's used. You put it on the air like that, you see? <laughs> it's a remarkable stuff. It is guaranteed to give the appearance of patent leather to the human fetch. You are now groomed to stardom, as they say. Go on, buzz off, you little basket. <laughs> Get right back.
I say, do you think you'll get to the Piccadilly Circus by 1.30? Yes, 1.30 in the morning. Have you want to meet a young lady there? Here, you can't bring those there in a public vehicle. They're films, ain't they? Yes. Then they're flammable. Go on, off, off, big boy. But I've got to get to Piccadilly. Can't I leave my auto on the platform or somewhere? Oh, it's Bartholomew the Strangler. Oh, well, is it you, Bartholomew, old fellow? You can stay. As long as you promise not to sit about me or any of the passengers. Thank you. Now everything seems to be all right. Will you have your drink after all? No, thanks. Come in. Oh, excuse me. Uh, will you ring up Whitehall? One, two, one, two. May I use your phone? Put me through to Superintendent Pulver, please. Spencer here, sir. A whole busload of people have been blown up in the West End. How awful. What time? Why do you ask? Well, after all, I can't be in two places at the same time, can I? I suppose not. I may be back later on. Cut on to anything? I'm not sure. Well, make up your mind. What is it, anyway? Bartho Bartholomew or something. Well, that's a film tin, isn't it? I thought you said Valak hadn't been out since this morning. He hadn't. Well, you'd best go back there and see if that's one of their films. You want me, sir? Yes, yes. You'd better join Hollington at the bird shop. Yes, sir. Don't go inside. Just keep your eyes open. I will, sir. All right, Spencer. Cut off. Yes. Is that anything to do with it, Mr. Spencer? Bartholomew the String. That's a film tin, isn't it? No. 
Sardines. He's all right. He can take care of himself. You've got nothing to worry about. Give me a pen. Alex, the news, big bomb sensation. Alex, the news, light X, the news, big bomb sensation. Alex, the news, light X, the news, big bomb sensation. Big bomb sensation. Alex, the news, light X, the news, big bomb sensation. Come on, keep back. Give us a minute. Please go away. Give us a minute. Give us a minute. Give us a minute. Give us a minute. I want Mr. Verloc. I want to see Mr. Verloc. I didn't mean any harm to come to the boy. Come on. You've got to think of tomorrow. You'll need all your wits about you to take it on to me. You might answer a fellow. Do be reasonable. What would it have been if you had lost me? Wine in the aquarium. A silly, jeering, dangerous brute with no more sense than you didn't know. Quite right, too. I'm not the chap to worry a woman that's fond of me. You have no business to know. You'll have to pull yourself together, my girl. What's done can't be undone. You could do better now. What you want is a good cry. I know how you feel. Do you think it doesn't touch me? Do you think I fixed it so that it'd be killed? No. But I tell you who did. Your Scotland Yard friend from next door, Ted. Blame him. I'd have carried the thing myself, but he was hanging around watching, spying. I couldn't get away. Listen. It's done now. And there's the future. Perhaps. I don't know. Perhaps if we had a kid of our own.
pull yourself together a bit. That's better. Number green. Why can't that woman cook green stuff any better? Surely she's been long enough here to know her pond I'm of that sort of thing. I don't think I want any cabbage. Couldn't we send next door for some? Stevie. You've heard? Yes. I'm terribly sorry. I don't know what to say. You know why I'm here? Yes. I'll have to arrest him. Yes. I'll help him if I can, of course. For your sake, if not for his. I'd do anything for you, you know that, don't you? It's very good of you, Ted. There isn't anything you can do for either of us. Things aren't as bad as that. The evidence is against him, I admit. But nothing's going to happen to you. I know this isn't a very good time to tell you. I shouldn't tell you at all, I suppose. But before I take him along, I want you to know that... what happens to you means a lot to me. I didn't want to tell you how I felt about you, but there it is.
I guess I'd better get my coat if we're going. I can't stop shivering. For God's sake, what happened? He killed Stevie. I feel warmer now. Let's go. Go where? To the police, of course. No, hold on, wait a minute. Let me go. You're not guilty. I know it was an accident. Anyway, you only did the hangman's job for him. Please let me go. I know the fact, but no one else does. What chance would you stand with the judge and jury? I don't care anymore. You're telling me you've nothing more to live for, is that it? Look at me. Jim. My dear, we're going to get out of all this. Clear out. You know it's no good. You'll just ruin yourself. What the hell with that? It's Saturday night. We don't need passports for the continent if we ask for weekend tickets. The train leaves at nine. Will someone try and get in that room? Mrs. Jones, or anyone? Mrs. Jones comes in at eight o'clock in the morning. Eight o'clock? And you say we've got no chance? Why, we've twelve hours start before anyone can find him. You shut up. I don't want to hear another word from you. Now go straight to that cinema and bring that birdcage right back before the police get there and find it. How could you have been so mad as to do such a thing? A birdcage with a bomb in it. My dear, I couldn't help. Well, you can help now. Here's your hat and your coat. Oh, my dear, but what of the risk? Risk? Who too? You? <laughs> what about me and the child? Haven't our lives been one long risk for months? Now go on, get into that taxi. And get that birdcage. Visual cinema, pen for pro. Follow that taxi. Put this through the yard. Please, Van, what's our number? UDC 4768. Reporting. Man under observation, just left bird shop, is making for the Bijou Cinema in a taxi which we are following. Any instructions? Reply is, arrest men and Verloc on arrival at cinema. Chief Inspector coming from Yard. I'm all right now. I just... You mustn't look as if you've been crying. I'm all right. Come on. Ted. Whatever happened... No time now, madam. But I'm Mrs. Bill. Oh, where have you been, Spencer? Look here, sir. just taking me along to the police station. Oh, oh I see. Does well, Mrs. Verloc know we want to question her? Yes, he's explained all that. I told him I wanted to make a statement. Statement, eh? What kind of statement? Mrs. Verloc, you can make your statement later at the station. All right, Spencer, I'm in charge of it. A statement to do with your husband? The old man's gone through to the back, sir. Right, I'm coming over. You wait here. Your husband will be along in a minute. It's no... But Mrs. Verloc! Yes, no time now, I'm afraid. Later. You stay here with the car, Spencer. How many men have gone round the back? <laughs> Mr. Verloc. It's 
the bell on. Come on, Grandpa, open up. It'll save a lot of trouble. Perhaps it's got a bomb. Half a dick. Better clear the cinema. I'll look after the old man. No, thanks. I'm staying here. Well, you've got a wife. All the more reason why I should stop. <laughs> Go mm. on, get the audience out. He's gone to the back. He's got a bomb. Says he's going to use it. A bomb? Is Valak inside too? I don't know. Perhaps something's happened to him. <laughs> Mrs. Vella, is your husband inside there? He knows nothing, sir. Why do you keep interfering, Spencer? Yes, he's inside. The old man's got a bomb. What's your husband's nerve like? Can he control him? No. He can't? He's dead. on the whole of the back of the place, clean blown out. Anybody? All the audience was there. Thank goodness, we heard it from the old boy. Huh? I saw some things in the wall, but... Any enough left to identify? I wouldn't say so, sir. You'd better get a first aid man to attend to that head of yours. You'd better look after Mrs. Bell. Her husband's dead. Blown to glory. <laughs> You can break it, Tara. There'll be a few inquiries later. There's nothing against her, as far as I can gather. Yes, sir. That's queer. Is that girl psychic? She said that Verloc was dead, sir. Well, you don't need second sight in a case like this. Oh, but she said it before. Or was it after? I can't remember. 